we're going to be checking out a guitar that you guys brought up on the podcast over and over again. So, what is it? It's an Eastman guitar. And I want to thank Eastman for loaning us this guitar so we can do this video, but I also want to thank the patron and channel members for making videos like this possible because this is not a paid sponsored video. If you're like me and you're not familiar with the brand Eastman, Eastman currently makes 50,000 instruments a year in the category of uh, electric guitars, acoustics, mandolins, and orchestra instruments, and they have over 2,000 luthiers working for them building these instruments. So let's go ahead, let's get into the geeky stuff. First thing we wanna do is uh, check out the case because it comes with a very nice case. The case uh, feels like suede. It doesn't feel like a rough vinyl. It feels like a soft suede. Um, obviously it's a man-made material, but that's what it feels like. It's got a branded logo. It says Eastman on it. Um, and then you have the beautiful instrument right here. Look at that. Look at that. It's the SB59 slash TV. It's crafted in China and it is, uh, it looks like it's set up and checked in Pomona, California. So looking at the guitar, starting from the headstock, we have a black veneer and then we have the Eastman logo, which is beautifully inlaid in pearl. Looks really good. And of course you can see it's not relic, but it's all just worn in. It's kind of looked like it's been sitting in a closet for 50, 60 years. The nut is bone and the measurements come in at 1.715. They're specking it at 1.68, which I think is about right. That would put this at 43.58 millimeters. And looking at how the nut slots were cut, they're very nice. Then we have an ebony fretboard with ivoryoid binding, which is just plastic. It's just a man-made material. And then of course on the inlays, they are pearl crowns and they're done really well. Now frets, the frets are Jeskar frets. Let me give you the measurements on those. And the width of the frets are at 0.103 with the height being 0.47. So this would put this in the medium jumbo territory. These are Jeskar frets and they're nickel silver. However, if they were Dunlop, they would be listed in the medium jumbo category because they're a little wide and they're pretty tall. And looking at the radius of the fretboard here, we have 12 inches. So. It's a 12 inch radius fretboard, much like a Gibson style guitar. And then checking the scale length right here, we're looking at 24 and three quarters. Looking at the truss rod cover, it is a piece of ebony. So it's there to match the fretboard, it looks great. And the truss rod is a single acting truss rod. So it doesn't have a dual action in this, but the neck is really stable. So it doesn't seem to need any help. A little tip here, if you use a drill or a powered screwdriver, and if you put too much torque, this will split, it'll crack. So you just wanna be aware of that. So the color on this model is called Vintage Classic. Now, Vintage Classic looks to you guys probably a little red. It is red in person. The finish they're using is called True Tone Vintage Gloss. If you're familiar with Eastman, you know that they use a varnish on some of their guitars. This one is using something different. They can ship this year round. One of the issues with the varnish guitars is they don't ship between June and August because of issues. Now, something also to point out with this guitar that's important is this is a two piece maple cap and it's been book matched and I think it's been beautifully done. In fact, this is definitely the kind of matching you would see on a custom shop Gibson or a Collings guitar, for sure. I mean, this is just a beautiful top. And to better help you guys see, I made a pencil mark right here. That is the, where the maple cap starts. So this is the mahogany body and that's your maple cap. Not a veneer, an actual solid piece of maple. This is an aged finish. This is not relic, it's aged. So it's not to look beat up. It's just to look like been sitting around for a long time. Speaking of hardware, let's talk about this. We have a three-way switchcraft part, which is great. Now the pickups are Lawler Imperials. However, these are custom aged and wound specifically for Eastman. So if you like the Lawler Imperials, essentially you'll like these pickups, but also keep in mind, these are tweaked just a little bit differently for Eastman. The bridge and tailpiece are both Godot parts. And again, they're aged and they look beautiful. And then you have four CTS 500K potentiometers. And then <laughs> they have the thumb slicers there. I'm not a big fan of these. There's a lot of people talk about these for years, you know, when you turn them. Sometimes if you're wrong, you get the little underneath your fingernail there and it doesn't feel great. I never have that problem. I just, it's in my head because people call them thumb slicers, but I've never actually poked myself with these things. But you can remove them if you don't like them. Looking at the back of the guitar, this is a beautiful one piece mahogany body. It's got some flaming in it. It looks great. We have plastic back covers. They are flush mounted. All right, let's weigh this guitar real quick. It is 8.09 pounds. 
So pretty light. You have a one piece mahogany neck with Godo vintage style tuning keys. They're the Cluson style keys, but these are by Godo. This is a quarter son piece of mahogany. And then the neck joint is a little different, a little bit more solid than what we're used to seeing. It just comes straight up right here, very nicely done. And of course, everything beautifully crafted. I mean, I've done so many reviews. Everything about this guitar screams custom shop. Everything looks like it was done and finished by hand. The strap buttons are vintage Godos. So they're made by Godo and they're vintage style. So they're small or what you're used to if you're on the Gibson style. I would prefer locking straps. Output jack is also Switchcraft and they're using a plastic plate. These plastic plates kind of always make me laugh. You know, in the 70s and 80s, everybody was just breaking these so they would put metal ones. And uh, all these years, companies still putting plastic ones on for the look, but yet a metal one is structurally much better. You know, everybody who's ever had these on stage knows wrong step on the wrong cable and you just crack this thing. But um, this looks actually pretty thick and pretty nice compared to what I've seen on some more recent guitars. Aesthetically, this looks right, but I prefer metal. Okay, so let's go ahead and check the frets. So absolutely flawless fretwork. Now, if somebody's asked in the past, shouldn't you do it in the playing position? When you're setting up a guitar, there is two preferred methods. You could put it in your lap in the sitting position, or you can put it on a bench like I do right here and hold it in the playing position. Now, either way should be fine. A lot of players worry about the neck like when you set it down this way, you know, cause it's putting force and if you do a setup, things will be askew and awry. And here's the deal, uh, you know, there's no wrong way to do something as long as the results are good. And in my experience, I prefer the playing position, mostly because every time I want to make an adjustment, I want to immediately play it to feel what had been adjusted, what feels good, what doesn't feel good. Um, but I've set up guitars sitting on a bench for many years as well. When you go to factories, when they build these guitars, they're mostly set up on the bench. But preferably, I would say, if you're setting up your own instrument, you definitely want to sit in the playing position. Um, in my experience, uh, you want to have as much intimate contact with the instrument while you're making adjustments, because measuring is important, but sometimes you'll just know when something doesn't feel right immediately when you make an adjustment. So those are my suggestions. So like I said, I prefer it in the playing position. In this particular case, why do I do it sometimes in the videos in the playing position and sometimes on the bench? It's for filming purposes. The playing position is the correct way, but on the bench is a great way to demonstrate it for videos. Before we go anywhere, let's check the measurements on this guitar, shall we? This guitar's action came in at <laughs> one and a half millimeters off the 12th fret. Looks pretty consistent across all the strings. And the neck has just a little bit of relief in it. So, so that feels pretty good. Okay, let's go ahead and check the fret ends. The frets themselves are super glossy. In fact, for a second, I almost thought they were stainless steel because they look so shiny, but they are nickel. Let's go ahead and check the fret ends. Okay, so let's use the sock and we'll do the sock test. And ooh, a little bit of snagging, but let's take a look. You have some lines right there. So I'm gonna call that a three and a half out of five. And again, the, the reason we use the nylon sock is because it's so sensitive. It's gonna show you guys everything. Three and a half, it means that you would not feel it with your bare hands. That's how basically what I should start explaining is that anything above a three, you probably wouldn't feel it with your own hand. You would need something like this to demonstrate it. So let's go ahead and try the base side. No issue at all there. So that's a five out of five, maybe a four and a half out of five. I see a little bit of spots right there, but again, very good. And this is probably a good time to mention that the fretboard is slightly more rolled than a Gibson fretboard. So it feels very comfortable on the sides. It's not harsh or pointy and it feels good. And let's get a measurement at the 12th fret. Okay, so at the 12th fret, we are 2.113 or 53.69 or 68 millimeters. So let's go ahead and look at this neck carve. Templing it out, this neck carve is sitting exactly 
at a 59 Les Paul. Now here's what's interesting. This is the correct 59 Les Paul template. So a lot of you think that the 59 neck carve is really thick and chunky, it's not. I've played three real 59 Les Pauls and all of them, I was shocked at how not chunky the necks were. <laughs> so apparently the necks, although kind of chunky, are not as chunky as a lot of the reissue stuff. So this neck feels almost identical to all three of the real 59 Les Pauls I was able to play. And to verify this, I'm gonna give you the thickness of the first fret, which is 22.33 millimeters or 0.879. And on the 12th fret, we're at 25.16 millimeters or 0.985. So again, like I said, this is not a super chunky neck. It looks like they follow the Gibson idea of not shielding the cavity. So there's no shielding in this cavity whatsoever. And then what we have here is two orange drop capacitors. And then we have four CTS 500K potentiometers done very well. I mean, it's very clean, obviously. Right, I like how they use this to frame it out. It's really cool. The question is, do you need shielding? And the rule I follow, which is just a general guideline for myself, is if we're using braided wire like this, heavily shielded, okay, instead of the foil shielding they put on a four conductor wire pickup. On this, I normally don't care about having anything shielded. But if this was a four conductor wire, I usually will shield it just because sometimes you can still get some interference. So, you know, you can get interference on anything. So shielding it is just an extra precaution. Again, if you were to shield this, no issues. However, does it need it? I wouldn't say it absolutely needs it, but it wouldn't hurt it to do it. So looking at the pickups, the bridge is reading in at 8.38 and the neck is sitting in at 7.38. Four, five. The bridge's inductance is at 4.52 and the neck inductance is at 3.87. This is interesting because this means that basically this is a very lightly wound humbucker, so it's not heavily wound, but the magnet seems pretty strong. In my experience, it'll have a nice warm but punchy kind of sound. So let's talk about this guitar's pricing. First, on this model that I'm reviewing today, the Lawlers alone are just over $400 if you want the age nickel. The guitar streets out about $2,300, which is a lot of money. Puts it right in the spot of a Gibson Les Paul standard made in USA. Although this guitar is made in China. But the market for this guitar is for someone who's played a Collings, about $7,000, or a Murphy Lab Les Paul, about $7,000. You can scratch that itch by trying this guitar. Guitar. I will tell you this, considering I've played all the guitars I just mentioned, I would say this guitar is on par with those guitars in every way. As I always do in the videos, I've had this guitar for a month. I've played it for a month. I've learned what it excels at and what it doesn't. This guitar shipped with 10 to 46 Diodario NYXLs. The other thing to point out is that balance wise, it's pretty balanced. You saw the weight listing and it's not heavy. Um, it's a little bit, you know, maybe a little bit towards the back is where the weight is, but it doesn't seem to make the guitar drop or fall. And same with on the strap, it's, it felt pretty good. Uh, neck is extremely comfortable. In fact, uh, that's I think the, the biggest selling point. If you played any of the Gibson R9s, if you played a lot of the guitars with the chunkier uh, style necks, this neck, uh, it vibes like a, like a 50s neck, but it doesn't, it's just not so, you know, so over, you know, whelming to your hand that you just feel like you're, you're getting fatigued from it. So we're running through two amps today. We're gonna to running through the clean through a 65 uh, deluxe reverb. It's mic'd up with an SM57 and there's a room mic in the room so you can get that too. And then when we switch to overdrive, we'll switch to a Friedman small box 50, uh, also mic'd up with an SM57. Both are running through a 112 slush and cream back. Let's start with the neck pickup. Okay, so let's go to the bridge pickup. That sounds great, it just... I mean, just really nice. Let's go to the middle, middle position. 
That's a nice way to warm it up, but still get the harmonics. Go ahead and switch the amp over to the uh, to the Friedman. Okay, so of course we'll start with the bridge pickup. Okay, let's go to the middle position. And now let's go to the neck position. So, how about some thoughts on this? Well, of course, it's an amazing guitar. Uh, I didn't really think it wouldn't be given the hype. I mean, this is probably the most uh, hyped I've heard of a guitar from the audience. The audience, every seems like every once a month or every couple months, somebody's like, hey, Eastman, it's way better than everything else. This definitely vibes like a, a high-end custom shop Gibson Les Paul or Collings, like I keep kind of pointing out. This is definitely for someone who's maybe played those guitars and felt that those guitars suited them perfectly, but not their budget. And this isn't budget friendly, but it's obviously a lot more obtainable than almost three times the price. Look, I mean, they're going for the gusto. I mean, the high-end case, all Godo hardware, Switchcraft electronics, Lawlers, Bone Nut, <laughs> Ebony fretboard, highly detailed, highly polished frets, this beautiful finish that just looks aged perfectly, all choice cuts of wood, and of course, the statement that they're using luthiers to actually build these guitars. All of those things really do, and this is really the important part because this is really what the channel is about. Do those claims transmit to what I've seen and felt uh, examining the guitar for a month. Yeah, it does. It does. Uh, I don't feel like they're doing anything less than what they claim. I'm not here to sell you the guitars. I'm here to give you the most information. I want to be your source of credible information and detailed information about instruments. So hopefully that's what you got in this video. And if you did, give it a like and a thumbs up. And as always, guys, I want to thank you so much for your time. To the next time, know your gear.